A massive Roman army lays siege to a beleaguered city. Fire rains from the skies. Huge war machines rumble up to the walls. It's a race against time for the defenders. Will they endure until help arrives, or will they succumb to the might of Rome? Tonight, a team of climbers from Suffolk, closely watched by our resident experts, find out in Time Commanders. Welcome to the show where history can take a whole new turn. Getting battle ready tonight is a team of climbers. They are sales director Chris Hutchinson, who managed to sell the idea of a climbing club to his mates in completely flat Suffolk. We're here for two reasons. One, obviously, to win, um, and two, just to enjoy ourselves. Graham Marsh, a personal trainer, who's also been a soldier, a ski instructor, a holiday rep and a barman. Very competitive person, always up for uh, a go at anything. So um, when I got the chance to go on and compete on the show, uh, it was an opportunity I had to take. We're not hanging by his fingers from a precipice. Dusty Goyman can be found riding his motorbike. Uh, my aims of the day are to win and kill as many people in the game as I can. And scientist Stephen Boxwell celebrated his conquering of Mont Blanc by pole dancing in Chamonix. If I had to pick a word that would describe our team, chaotic, I think. Together, this band of thrill-seekers are tonight's time commanders. Welcome to the show, guys. It's nice to have you here. What do you reckon you're going to bring to this, Chris? What special skills as a group? Uh, we work well as a team. We're yeah. all completely different from each other, all different personalities and everything else, so all different strengths and weaknesses. So together as a team, we're going to romp home. Teamwork is important. You know only two of you are going to be generals, don't you, Graham? Right, yeah. So you're going to have to... Well, the decision will be made and you'll have to work together. And who is it? Is it Dusty? Is it you that's had your hair cut especially? Yeah, they made me get rid of my fringe. <laughs> Why did you have your hair cut? Well, I had a big fringe and they made me cut it off so you couldn't see my you eyes. see, maybe you've lost your strength. I don't know. It might help. Guys, good luck this evening. All I can say is pay attention to everything you hear. Be brave and valiant and we'll find out what happens to you by the end of the show. Keeping an eye on everything that happens to these guys and every move they make will be our experts. And they are historical analyst Arik Nussbacher, senior lecturer in war studies at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and ancient historian and author Adrian Goldsworthy. Now, obviously, you are all champing at the bit to get going, but before you do that, you need to know what battle you'll be fighting. That's what you're about to find out, because your battle briefing is next from our experts. You are about to refight the battle of Sarmizagathusa. It's the year 106, and you're going to be high in the Carpathian Mountains of what is now Romania. The Roman army is led by Marcus Ulpius Trajanus, the Emperor Trajan. He's not been emperor long, he doesn't have a lot of military experience, and he's fighting this war to prove that he can command troops in the field and to bring a lot of money back to Rome. Now, you're looking at Sarmigatusa, that is a very, very strong fortress. Sarmigatusa is the capital, both politically and religiously, of the very, very wealthy kingdom of Dacia. Trajan has raced deep into Dacia with a small proportion of the Roman army. He's moving very quickly because he needs to assault and take this fortress town before the rest of the Dacian army arrives. Now, team, you're going to be commanding the Roman army of the Emperor Trajan. It's the pick of all the empire, and the Roman Empire at its very height. Now, at its core are the legions, the citizen soldiers, the tough professionals who served for 25 years, very well drilled, very well disciplined, heavily equipped, very, very good in close combat. Trajan's also got his own bodyguard, the Praetorian Guard. He's got some of those with him. They fight much the same way as the legionaries, but they've got a lot to prove. They've got to show they're actually worth their double pay that they get. 
And on top of that, he's got non-citizen soldiers, foreign auxiliary infantry. Not quite so heavily equipped as the legions, but still very tough in close combat, very disciplined. The Romans also have a large cavalry detachment, and they've got a detachment of Numidian light cavalry, who are not Romans themselves, but are experts at throwing their deadly javelins when they're on the move. Now, your legionaries aren't just good at fighting people, they're all very highly trained as engineers as well. They can build and they can use siege engines. And you've got two main types of these you're going to have to deal with. The first are your artillery. The stone throwers that lob very large lumps of rock a considerable distance with great force. They can kill people, they can knock down bits of the fortification. Then you've got to get over those fortifications. You've got siege towers, big towers on wheels with a drawbridge that drops down onto the top of the wall and your men can swarm across. So our team of climbers will be the Romans, taking on the Dacians as they storm the fortress at Sar Mesogatuza. How do you feel about it? feel pretty good. good. OK. The good thing is our experts are here to answer two questions and you only get two. Clearly they know everything about this. You can ask two questions, use them wisely. Ask away. OK, we've got to obviously assault this fortress. Do you think it's best to unite all your forces in one full-on frontal assault, or is it a more effective tactic to split your forces and attack on several fronts? Some of your forces aren't going to be terribly useful assaulting a town. If a man's on horseback, you're not going to get him to ride up a ladder into it. So your cavalry are very obvious ones to be out looking around to see if anyone else is doing anything nasty. You just need to have reserves that you can use for anything unexpected, whether it's reinforce the assault or meet some other threat. Next question. What defences are they going to actually have on the wall? I mean, is it going to be like big ballistas or just bow and arrows? I mean, sort of type things. Yes. Big ballistas and bows and arrows. Oh. And uh, they're going to have... Uh, the characteristic architecture of Dacian fortresses includes uh, some really chunky dry stone construction topped with wooden towers designed to attack people who are trying to get up the wall. So, very sturdy construction. It would be hard to take down these walls. I'll tell you one thing, this battle, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be spectacular. Right, we've got to a very important point. We've now got to decide, you can't all be generals. Two of you will be fighting as captains, carrying out the orders that will be given by the other two fighting as generals. You don't make the decision, they do. We wouldn't be here if we didn't think we were going to win. Um, obviously, time, things can change that, but no, we're going to have a good chance of winning this. As good a chance as anybody. Chris, today, you're a general. Excellent. Steve, you are a captain. Graham, today's battle, you're going to be a general. Okay. Dusty, you are a captain. OK, we're going to win. Simple. We're not going in there with any other attitude than we're going to win. Losing just isn't an option today. So now you know. Chris, Graham, you'll be the generals. Dusty, Steve, you'll be the captains. Guys, what do you reckon? Any good? Is this going to work as a team? Fantastic. It's definitely going to work. Yeah, well, you no would way. say that. I think you'd assault if you were a general. Well, good luck. I hope it works. Before the big one, though, we've got the skirmish, the smaller fight before the main battle. This is quite common, actually. A lot of battles started like this, and it's good news for you because it's an opportunity to learn. And our experts are going to tell you what to expect. Your army is approaching this fortress at a brisk pace. You know that outside the fortress there is a covering force designed to delay the approach of your main force. Your job in this skirmish is to clear that covering force away from these walls. Once you've got them out of the way, that ground is yours. And then you've got the space and the territory. You can bring up your siege towers, you can bring up your artillery, and you can really have a go. And that's it from the experts, because Eric and Adrian go upstairs now. They'll be watching from above to see how you do. They are pretty critical, I warn you. What's your plan? March up there and... March up there and find out what's waiting for us. Take him out. Get stuck in and see what happens. You've got to take the plunge sometime. <laughs> Let's see what you're made of. Let's have a fight. <laughs> We're off. Good, go. Good luck, go guys. Down, go. OK, go check out what you've got there, guys. Right, what have we got here, then? Uh, okay, got the enemy are already on their way out, and they're not coming to say hello. 